Right now at 6, terror in the sky. A small plane crashing into a building before slamming to the ground. The two people on board were killed. That crash was caught on camera, and you can see the plane hitting the building before crashing to the ground. We have live team coverage of the whole thing. Ian Markle has new information about the victims, but we begin with Jeff Weinseer live at the crash scene in Pembroke Park. Jeff. Lou, a witness tells us before the plane hit the building behind me, he heard a boom. It caught his attention. He actually looked up, saw one of the engines smoking, saw the plane on its side, and then it hit the fifth floor of that building. Many raced over to help, but there was simply nothing they could do. A camera on a nearby building catching the final seconds. The plane hitting the top floor of a storage facility on Park Road. Stephen J. Gray, who flies for total traffic, and his pilot were listening to the radio transmission. My pilot's like listening on the radio and he hears, oh, F, oh, S, oh, my gosh. And uh, then the tower says, calls out the end number of the airplane that just went down. The plane didn't respond. The plane hit the fifth floor, crashing to the parking lot below the engine 30 yards from the fuselage. Those who work in a nearby warehouse raced over to the scene, but there were no survivors, no one to help. The front of the plane destroyed by the impact. Where are they at? They're here. They're all dead. Ah, Dios. Describe the sound that you heard. It's a heavy sound, man. Whoom. A big sound. That's all. The plane, a twin-engine aero commander, was in the air nine minutes, crashing on the way to Opalaka. There are two confirmed uh, bodies deceased in the plane. Gray has been in the air for 20 years. Twin-engine airplane, uh, it's got twin engines, but when it loses an engine, it can be very difficult to fly, and you have to keep it. It wants to yaw, and it can get out of control. Right across the street from where this plane crashed, there's a golf course. So if it's possible they could have made it, but you can see... They hit the building here, and uh, it, it sounds like, just listening to the, the cockpit uh, conversation, that maybe something happened, the plane was out of control, and, and they lost it. And Sky 10 HD, over the scene right now, you can see the plane and investigators still there. They removed the bodies late this afternoon. We also want to tell you Park Road remains closed from Hallandale Beach Boulevard up to Pembroke Road. The good news, no one was in that facility at the time and no one was in the parking lot when that plane went down. We're live in Pembroke Park. Jeff Weins here, Local 10 News. All right, Jeff, thank you. And sadly, two people did die in that crash. But now we are learning more about that fatal flight. Local 10 News reporter Ian Margle continues our live team coverage from Opelaka. Ian. We just learned the name of one of those victims, Joaquin Ricalde Magaña. Take a look, we do have a picture of him, his niece, tweeting this picture out with a caption that basically says, in part, life is short and a privilege, and if you don't remember that, it will remind you, have a good trip, Uncle Huacho. This was a flight with no return. Now the investigation into how they crashed is underway. An FAA and NTSB investigation now underway into a fatal plane crash Friday morning. The company at the center of that investigation, Conquest Air Incorporated, is based in Miami Lakes and does most of their flying out of the Miami Opelaka Executive Airport. It appears that's where the 1969 Aero Commander 500S plane was headed, taking off from Pompano Beach just before 9 a.m. But only minutes later, it came crashing down in Pembroke Park with two people on board. Conquest Air sent us a statement about the crash, saying in part, quote, Our concern is with the pilots and their families. We will continue to work with relevant authorities to obtain more information regarding the situation. The company flies daily trips from Miami to the Bahamas, but they tell us this plane was not part of their cargo operation and is not used for any commercial purposes. And this isn't the first time we've covered a Conquest airplane going down. In fact, in February of 2019, one of their cargo planes was on its way from the Bahamas when it ended up in the water. One man was rescued at the time, and a search and rescue mission was conducted for a second person. So again, we have confirmed that Magaña was one of those victims. The other person, still no official word at this point. They were, uh, BSO was telling us they were waiting to speak to next of kin with most, with both of these families. But of course, the niece telling us Magania's name a little bit earlier. We, as soon as we get any updates, of course, we will let you know. 
We are live at Miami Opelika Executive Airport. I'm Ian Margul, Local 10 News.